For a cardboard mock-up, I think this gives a pretty good idea of what I'm going to be doing. Hi, I'm Joe, and welcome to Motor City Boatworks. Let's get to work. Welcome back to the shop. If you're new to the channel, Motor City Boatworks is my retirement amateur boat building and boat restoration studio. I'm restoring a 1986 Alban 27 family cruiser. That's the boat behind me. And the new boat that I recently acquired for the Boatworks, a 1981 Skipper 20 trailer bull sailboat. The Skipper 20 has been on my bucket list for a number of years. There were only about 500 of these boats ever made. It's a shoal draft, salty little trailer bull character sailboat. If you've been watching the show, you know that I've already done an episode about buying the boat and unpacking it, and then another episode about what's the plan for this little sailboat. Over these episodes, you, the viewers, have helped me decide what's going to be my ambition, my plan for this little sailboat. This episode is about how I'm going to design a small pilot house for the Skipper 20 sailboat. I want to thank everybody for the comments and all their questions regarding how I'm going to go about doing this. A lot of the questions came from folks who have their own small trailer bull sailboats, and they want to know how to do a pilot house on their boat what things should they be taking into consideration? So we're gonna spend some time and I'm gonna talk about the design and the design parameters of putting a small pilot house on a small sailboat. I think this is something that's not really talked about, but it's important because it will inform every step of the restoration process, both in terms of material, what the actual design's gonna be like, and how we're gonna go about doing it. I hope you stick with me. Now, as you know, I'm not a professional. I'm not a naval architect. This is just one guy's idea about the things I take into consideration when I'm gonna do one of these pilot house conversions. I've already done one pilot house conversion on a 1983 compact 16 trailer bull sailboat and it came out really, really well. And I'm gonna be following the same principles that I used on that boat when I do the pilot house conversion on the Skipper 20. First things first, let's make sure that we're all using some common vocabulary. A pilot house is an enclosed structure on the deck of a boat where you can steer the boat. Now you'll hear people refer to a hard dodger, a soft dodger, a spray hood. These are all different things and are not to be confused with a pilot house. A pilot house can be enclosed on three or four sides. The portholes could be fixed or they could be opening. You will be able to steer this boat from inside the pilot house. How do we do this? We do it using a tiller extension. On sailboats, you'll sometimes see what's called a soft dodger. It's usually a stainless or aluminum frame that has some fabric around it. And this is designed to keep water from going into the sailboat, waves splashing up and going down inside the companionway. When your dodger is made of something more permanent and is a rigid structure, well, it's called a hard dodger. A spray hood is usually a piece of fiberglass or wood that also prevents water from going down the companionway, but what it's really designed to do is kind of act as a housing for the companionway hatch. What we're gonna be doing on the Skipper 20 is what I call a pilot house conversion. If you're enjoying this episode, would you do me a favor? Hit the like button and maybe leave a comment below. I invite you to subscribe. And if you really wanna help out the channel, well, please consider leaving a donation on Patreon. This channel would not be possible without your support. A lot of people ask me, how do you know if the boat you're gonna be doing the pilot house conversion on is a good donor boat? So let's take a moment to talk about that up front. Truth be told, you could probably put a pilot house on any small sailboat, but if you're not careful, if you don't think ahead, if you don't follow your design parameters, you may end up with a bad case of UBS, ugly boat syndrome. Oh no, 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 I don't wanna be the guy with the ugly boat. There are some small sailboats that are just not good candidates for a pilot house conversion. I like to choose small sailboats that have a salty look. They tend to be more traditional looking sailboats, beautiful curved lines. The hull is usually a little fuller. Bow will rise nicely 
from the stern. In and of itself, the sailboat should be desirable. There should be a strong following and it should be in high demand. Because the pilot house will be bolted to the upper deck, the boat needs to be constructed fairly well. In order for it to be a pilot house, it's got to be close enough to the steering position. Tiller extension will only get you so far. If the hull is too shallow, if the boat design is too angular, this can be a problem. Oftentimes, more modern or generic small sailboats they just don't have the character that responds well to a pilot house conversion any way you look at it a small pilot house conversion requires a lot of time effort and some money in the case of my compact 16 pilot house conversion that whole project took about 200 man hours and about six to eight hundred dollars in materials now the man hours is only the time spent working on the actual pilot house and installing it it doesn't include sourcing the materials, picking them up, cure times, dry times, waiting for things to be ready for finishing and painting. All I'm saying is choose the right small sailboat for your pilot house conversion. Now you will hear some well-meaning individuals speak out against the idea of putting a pilot house on a small trailerable sailboat. You often hear them say things like, you're going to ruin the balance uh, of the boat. You're going to add too much uh, weight. You're going to cause the boat to have too uh, much windage. You're going to make the boat look ugly. Uh, you're going to ruin the lines. While all those things are possible for the amateur boat restorer or boat builder, let me tell you, if you follow these design principles and this construction technique, you will greatly reduce the chances of any of those things happening. Don't let them talk you out of it. Let's get started. We need some key measurements and we need to use a critical eye to look at the lines of the boat. This is just a simple pilot house. It's basically a box with one side open. In its simplest form, this pilot house is two sides, a front and a top. And we need to take some measurements to get some idea of what the dimensions are going to be. First thing we need to know is what's the distance from the rear of the mast step to the aft edge of the cabin top. Then we need to know the distance from the rear of the mast step to the aft end of the pilot house. This will be up to your individual choice. Next, you need to know what the beam of the boat is. How wide is the boat? You need to know the width of the cabin top at the point where the sides meet the top of the cabin. And then you need to determine what is the relative width of the cabin top. Relative width refers to where the sides of the pilot house are gonna come in contact with the top of the cabin. It's usually a couple inches more inboard from the actual width of the cabin top. The last dimension is probably the most important one, and that's gonna be the height of the pilot house from the cabin top. We'll talk about how to determine the height of your pilot house in just a little bit. Here's where we start analyzing the lines of the boat. When taking these measurements, you need to be conscious of the camber of the deck. That's the curve of the deck from the center line outboard. We need to know what's the drop from the center line of the boat to the sides of the cabin top. It's basically an arch. The center is higher than the side. I like to take a measurement from the deck to the top of the cabin top on the side sides and in the center. This will usually give me an idea of the drop. There's a couple more things we need to be aware of. How much fore to aft does the cabin top slope in relation to the waterline? And also, what is the rake of the forward cabin edge? All of these dimensions I make note of, and I like to put them into a little worksheet. The worksheet will be available to the workers on my Patreon site. How do you know how tall to make the height of your pilot house? I know, this one's a tough one. Too tall and the pilot house won't look in proportion to the lines of the boat. Too short and the pilot house won't really accomplish anything. Here's where I like to take some more measurements. The height of the cabin top from the deck at the point that is the front of the pilot house. I also like to measure the height of the cabin top from the deck at what would be the aft end of the pilot house at the aft end of the cabin. These numbers will give you an idea of the proportions of the boat. You could then get an idea of what could be the maximum height of the pilot house. Usually, it's about two times the height of the cabin. Now, this is not always the case, but it'll get us started on the way to making a mock-up so we can get an idea of what this is going to look like. We have to very carefully balance our design parameters 
versus what's gonna look good on the boat. In this case, we have two design parameters for the Skipper 20 Pilot House. In this case, I want standing room at the companionway, and I want to be able to steer the boat from this position by leaning against the stairs or the bridge deck. Trust me when I tell you the height of the pilot house will make or break your design. Whoa, now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, man, that's some nuances of boat building. And you're also probably thinking, hey, how come there's not a cute pet or a kitten supervising all this work? All right, enough talking. Let's build something. So I'm going to be doing a hot glue gun mock-up where I take large pieces of cardboard, sketch out a design, cut it to size, and then kind of hot glue gun everything together. I call this tool the hot mess. Ooh, that's just a hot mess. I like using this 20 volt battery powered hot glue gun because I don't have to worry about cords snagging or pulling on anything. It's a lot easier to use. It's fast and it's very reliable. Motor City Boatworks has no sponsors and I get no compensation from any of the companies or the products that I sometimes mention on my channel. However, in the description, I sometimes put links for Amazon where you can find some of the tools or items that I'm using in the restoration of my boat. Amazon does provide a small commission if you use those links. So here we are, this is our initial mock-up based off of the measurements from the worksheet. Obviously cardboard has its limitations and people get hung up on the curves and the angles not being right, but that's not the point of the mock-up. The point of the mock-up is to get to something that we can stand underneath to understand how much room we have to work with. The mock-up is not a pattern. We'll address the curves and matching the deck camber when we get to the construction phase. This is kind of the point of the design worksheet. It's where reality meets what you're putting on paper. Here you can see my initial estimate on how long I thought the pilot house would be. Well, you can see the overhang in relation to the aft end of the cabin top. This is something unexpected. All right. <laughs> This is the inside of the pilot house. We got all kinds of glue spider webs here hanging down from my hot glue gun extravaganza, but uh, it probably looks on camera a lot bigger than it is inside here. It's just enough room to kind of stand here and turn around. And uh, the, there's some bracing here, you know, from my cardboard job, but this will all be open because the inside will be frameless using the Kusa board screw and glue method. And I'll talk about that in detail down the road. You're going to want to see that because uh, it's a great technique for building things out of Kusa board. It allows you to build things frameless. Now, you might use a frame to actually bend the Kusa board, kind of get it into place, but then you screw the corners together. And then after the fact, go in and lay in some fiberglass, fiberglass fillets. And you also maybe can put some fiberglass tape or do some little bit of fiberglass fabric work, either on the inside or outside. And that's probably what we'll do. It helps the Kusa board, you know, kind of become a little more robust and certainly more stiff, especially once you've got a complex shape with curves and things like that following the camber of a deck. So we'll get to that down the road. This first mock-up just seemed a little too tall. And when I stood inside the pilot house, the roof was about two inches over my head. It was just too tall. With a cardboard mock-up, it's a simple matter to drop the hard top two inches. I like it. It's pretty good. This was the second iteration that I made. The first one was, I felt like it was a little too tall. It didn't quite look right. And now I'm much happier. Just two inches made a significant difference. Reducing the overall height, thereby changing the profile of the pilot house. I think it looks a lot better now. And I definitely think this is something worth doing. The top here will need some sort of a sliding hatch that slides forward so that you can climb down inside, step on the steps. We'll have to, uh, that'll be something to fabricate, but I did something very similar on the Compact 16, so I'm not concerned about that. And I actually have a used fiberglass hatch that I think will work fine as a slider. In a future episode, I'm gonna do part 
two of pilot house design in which i talk about the hatch on the top of the pilot house the edge of the pilot house roof as well as how to finish the aft end of the pilot house be sure to check it out but there definitely is standing headroom i'm six feet tall and uh, i've got at least a half inch to an inch above me so that tells you the profile could even come down slightly more what makes this possible on the skipper 20 is the camber of the forward deck uh for the for the forward cabin when you when you look at it from the outside it's actually a four inch drop from its high point to the sides that's four inches and because it's so dramatic it really gives a lot of headroom in the center of the boat the purpose of this was just to kind of prove the concept to help give an idea to everyone what would this thing look like and is it really worth doing I think the answer is yes. I, I, I just think it's going to look awesome. Well, there you go. In future episodes, I'm going to be talking about the budget for this little trailer bull sailboat. I'm going to also be discussing the construction method in detail. We're going to build it together so you can see how the pilot house is constructed. Now, that's quite a ways down the road. Be sure to check in on the channel because I have a variety of projects that I'm finishing up before the end of the year. Rest assured that work continues on the Alban 27 pocket trawler. Right now, we're kind of stuck with a little bit of a backlog trying to get the shower covering and the headliner material installed in the boat so we can finish up phase one and move on to phase two, the systems for my pocket trawler. Everything takes a little bit of time, so have patience. If you have a question or a comment about any of the projects I do in the Boatworks, go ahead and leave a comment below or send me an email through the Motor City Boatworks website or on the homepage of my YouTube channel. I want to thank you for stopping by. We'll see you next time. Stay motivated. If you like these videos, please hit the subscribe button. These videos would not be possible without your support.